Fair use, fair use. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use, fair use. Shalom to the royal family of Israel. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yahweh and His mighty Son, the Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. I want to give a salutation to all the mighty men, mighty women, and mighty children of Israel. And today's lesson is the life of Judah. So today we're going to be covering the life of Judah. And who is Judah? Judah is the fourth born child of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel and his first wife, Leah. If you are a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade, you are an Israelite. However, specifically for those descendants that were sent here to the United States of America, Judah, without a shadow of a doubt, looked like Negroes. You're not Ishikar, you're not Asher, you're not Nephtali, you're not Ephraim. You are a Jew. You blacks are Jews. You Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. But we're here to go over the life of Judah. Fair use, fair use. I was the fourth son born to my father Jacob, and Leah, my mother, named me Judah, saying, I give thanks to the Lord, because he hath given me a fourth son also. I was swift in my youth, and obedient to my father in everything. And I honored my mother, and my mother's sister. And it came to pass, when I became a man, that my father blessed me, saying, Thou shalt be a king, prospering in all things. And the Lord showed me favor in all my works, both in the fields and in the house. I know that I raised a hind, and caught it, and prepared the meat for my father, and he did eat. And the rose I used to master in the chase, and overtake all that was in the plains. A wild mare I overtook, and caught it, and tamed it. I slew a lion, and plucked a kid out of its mouth. I took a bear by its paw, and hurled it down the cliff, and it was crushed. I outran the wild boar, and seizing it, as I ran, I tore it in sunder. A leopard in Hebron leaped upon my dog, and I caught it by the tail, and hurled it on the rocks, and it was broken in twain. I found a wild ox feeding in the fields, and seizing it by the horns, and whirling it round, and stunning it. I cast it from me, and slew it. So we're going to talk about the birth of Judah. The book of Genesis chapter 29 verse 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So here is talking about Leah. And at this point she gave birth to her fourth child, Judah. Another name for Judah is praise. Because she believed that after giving birth to her fourth son, she was happy and her husband would stop hating her. The book of Genesis chapter 29 verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Where the problem lies is that Jacob made an agreement with Laban to work for seven years so that he would get Rachel. Rachel is who he originally wanted, not Leah. And so when, after the seven years, Laban tricked Jacob. And instead of giving him Rachel, he gave him Leah. And he slept with her, thus making her his wife. He was very, very angry about that because he got tricked. He got tricked by Laban. And unfortunately, Leah was in on the and because of that, he hated her. He was not happy at being tricked. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Judah is the top tribe. The Lord is going to have favor over this particular tribe. Why is that? Who came out of this tribe? Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh The only begotten of the Most High. The Messiah, the Savior, the King of Kings, the Governor, our brother. The world ignorantly calls him Jesus. He came out of the line of Judah. Verse 34, And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was he his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So the Lord opened up the womb of Levi, and she just started sprouting them out. So she had Reuben, Simeon, Levi, the fourth born child, Judah. And at that point, she was happy because she knew her husband would be happy 
because she gave him four sons. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. All of the tribes of Israel shall bow down before Judah. All of you. The book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 2. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. It didn't identify all 12 tribes. It identified the leader of the group, Judah. The book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 3. And Judas begat Pharaoh and Zara of Thamar. And Pharaoh begat Eshram. And Eshram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Nason. And Nason begat Solomon. And Solomon begat Booz of Rachab, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Robom, and Robom begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Osias, and Osias begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achat, and Achaz begat Ezekiah, and Ezekiah begat Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Amon, and Amon begat Josiah, and Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadduk, and Sadduk begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahawasha, who was called Christ. So all the generations of Abraham to David are fourteen generations, and from David until the the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. What we showed now was from Judas all the way down to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Yahweh. The book of Genesis chapter 35 verse 23. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulon. So these are all of the children which either were born directly out of Leah or from her handmaid. Look at Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, and it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Ishakar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan and Nathali, the sons of Zilpha, Leah's handmaid, Gad and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And the days of Isaac were an hundred and fourscore years. And Isaac gave up the goat and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried. So this is giving the breakdown of all of the 12 tribes of Israel. These are the 12 tribes. We are the descendants of Jacob. Now let's talk about Judah and his brothers sell Joseph into slavery. Yes, folks. Unfortunately, the Israelites were wicked as hell. They committed one of the worst atrocities. They sold their own brother into slavery over in the fair use, fair use. Dina Demso, Mamma Dina Demso, no 
wafatana dozo tukuni nani ufura na makaka eye sasa nyesa ulo ula bara de ki faye ki sara furula ngonya eh dina pininko ako foka je dolite reka kabo arasel de ki foka pinina antora la ko kele mbambali akalo muka fleni ki fake maka on signe sangai ngoro akalo muka fle ki fama ko tamu sula adomu yol yol lai ko falato yusufu tara akna ble waraw ya fara fara sanga bana o de atone ko ngonde ka baba to ka fini ko ka joli bala ma wara ka ta tnyei ye yusuf ti ka ti don strafle i don se gira ka na ka baba ko ngen yoro la ki kanto ma anfa anfa yusuf tara anfa anfa ku mo wara ji ko ye yusuf fara fara i ka lon ka fone ya ku ba no sanga sigi muso ki don ga Yusuf su segima nera bolona joluko ka jol fini ko ka tlaka su tro ma fle bisu ko ko pou ri tie kan tie pla fana ye ka nya no ko na ye ya si ka don ko foy ne tise abada ka ne ya ku ba boni sanga la sigila Nga masa ke amor, e akli te bagan gena yusuf la, ya kuba denga ni mingu ko kada nyo kodi bu, ngo ra amor, e akli tala, i demu zoku maf le zoku mina, e akolo kunga masa, e ko stradi u chama sebe shun, a tumbi ko dolo, tu di bifina, e akolo le ngundo, e ko furu muso nyuma, ma koro amor, e bi soe muso ka tona nda to zoka sigi koro, keu, no kera ina furu sa, kene kela re mu yeni bagan gena ta koro, tona nda, e ko ra amor, tona nda, e no ko yusuf u imbe mi de. Anga bagan wala mandi abla rama meno zeve ka ta ngoko no ko luka ko si olu na le ngi ngale kwa bade nge yusuf bemi u kwa zara ko waraw ya fara fara akal faru ma ko waraw ya dun e o bisaka ketu ko un na le la ka do ki jolema e u yo de ba bae akala nge na un na na ko do ki jolema na ko ga bagala bagala na do i po so pro nga ma di e na ko wara do yero fara ko lo na wa Olo ni wala duka ke nyona so ni ndama ye nyinda maye o parko lola Joni maye fan zibe ni yuzo bunyuma ka kinite nga bara ta yo yere foku ye ya ufaye ko note ko wara o de adu mi bale mo bula ka to ni wara ya adu adaros ma amen niko The book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 26 And Judah said unto his brethren What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood This was the conspiracy conversation that took place You see the Israelites actually wanted to kill Joseph But right here Judah said What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood Look at Genesis chapter 37 verse 1 And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock of, with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he, he was the son of his old age, and he made him a a coat of many colors and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren they hated him and could not speak peaceably of, of unto him and Joseph dreamed a dream that he told and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more why did his brothers hate him because he was loved more than them So now we understand why they hated him. Joseph dreamed a dream and he told his brothers about this dream and they hated him because of this dream. Let's find out about the dream. Verse 6 and he said unto them, "Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright and behold your sheaves stood round about and made of obeisance to my sheep and his brethren said unto him shalt thou indeed reign over us or shalt thou 
indeed have dominion over us. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Obeisance here is reverence to. So he told him that he was the sheep that stood upright and all of the other sheep were subservient to him. They all bowed down to him. They were to worship him. He was the ruler. They were to serve. He even had another dream where it said the sun and the moon and 11 stars made reverence for him. So right here, the sun represented Jacob. The moon represented his wives. The 11 stars represented the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel. And all of them will be reverencing their little brother and he told it to his father and to his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him what is this dream that thou hast dreamed shall i and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth and his brethren envied him but his father observed the saying and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send them unto and send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron and he came to sick him. So Jacob knew that his sons hated Joseph and he rebuked him for that dream that he was telling everybody. He thought it would be a good idea for Joseph to go out to where his brothers were and see if all was well with them and bring back word. And a certain man found him and behold, he was wandering in the field and the man asked him saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where be they feed their flock? And the man said, they have, they are departed hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. So you see, they had a crafty counsel against their brother Joseph. Why? Because they were jealous. Why? Because their father loved him more than them. So they said, Hey, let's slay him and throw him in a pit. Let's see what else happened. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they scripted, Joseph out of his, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. You see, the oldest brother, Reuben, said no we can't kill him but what we will do is throw him in this pit so they took his coat of many colors off of him threw him in the pit then sat down and had lunch they saw some ishmaelites from gilead and they had a whole bunch of goodly wares with them and judah said unto his brethren what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood come and let us sell him to the ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianite merchantmen, men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and said, And, behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not. 
and I whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and it killed uh, a kid kid of goats and dipped the coat in the blood. Reuben was pretty afflicted over his brother. So Judah convinced his other brothers to go ahead and sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites. And he did say that we can't kill him. He is our brother. He is our flesh. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew and he said, it is my son's coat, and evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces, and Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loin, and mourned for his son many days, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, he, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Joseph eventually was sold to those nasty Egyptians. Jacob's children tried to comfort Jacob, and he didn't want their comforting. You know why? He knew that they were lying. He knew that his sons had something to do with Joseph's disappearance slash demise. So he didn't want nothing from them. A very dark moment of the 12 tribes of Israel. Judah leaves his brothers and marries Hiram and gave birth to Ur and Onan and Shelah. Judah also slept with Tamar and gave birth to Pharaoh and Zerah. Fair use, fair use. Hey, 
Nana Maba kon na brange ka jonge tigle. Ne bu flade, yeda. Kele mulo balia ne ngi. Kele same ne ngi. Eh yuda, ala jonge ka fuma kala makose ba koy. Wa mulo balia nya bi jele garami. Eni ka mulo ya tie ne do garami. Let me get the book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 1. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 1. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adullamite, whose name was Harar. So he went off on his own. He came into contact with an Adullamite named Haran. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in under her. So, you know, it's funny. We were not allowed to have any dealings at all with the Canaanites. However, our forefather, Judah, what did he do? He went right on down there to the Canaanites. He went in. That means that he had sex with her. And she conceived and bare a son. And he called his name Ur. So his first son's name was Ur that he had with this heathen. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she called his name Onan. So he went in onto her again, and had another son, his name was Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Chesib when she bare him. So he had three children with this filthy animal. Shelah was the third son. Fair use, fair use. <laughs> Yuda, Aleye, Denge Sabadesro, Kanana Koka Adda, Ne, 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 And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Judah, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, he knew that his generation, he had to start to build his house. So he found a wife for his firstborn son, Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. You know, it never identifies why he was wicked, but the Lord had to take him out. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Judah told his second son to go in unto his brother's wife and raise up his children. Because the child that he would have with Tamar would be Ur's kid. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Gross as this is, he pulled out. He said, I can't do it because that child won't be mine. It'll be my brother's. Ultimately, it would be bringing my brother's spirit 
back onto the earth. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So he decided on purpose that he was going to go against the Lord's statue. He had to kill him. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Judah, her father-in-law, told her to post up. Wait for this very young boy right here to grow up, and then that's going to be your husband. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shears to Timnath, he and his friend Hera the Adulamite. The Most High took out his wicked wife, and it says here, Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shearer. So these are the people who cut the wool off of his sheep. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. So somebody told Tamar where he was going to be. Because she's fed up. The book of Genesis chapter 38, verse 14. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place which is by the way of Tamath for she saw that she law was grown and she was not given unto him to wife so she already observed that this very young son who was supposed to be her husband wasn't given to her so what she did is she took off her widow's garment and she went and sat in an open place. Uh, the book of Genesis chapter 38, verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. So she covered her face. He said, this must be a hoe. Fair use, fair use. <laughs>
Sheila, ne por quê? Vili que jogo. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Realize she's playing the harlot. So she's saying all the stuff that a good hoe would say. So he turned to her and said, I pray thee. That's an interesting way to ask about having sex. I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. And what does she say? What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in on? What you gonna give me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, wilt thou give me a plant till thou send it? He's saying, I'll give you one of my baby goats from the flock, but I mean, you don't have none of them baby goats with you right now. So she's like, well, what you gonna give me as a pledge that you gonna get that to me? And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? And she said, thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her and she conceived by him. What pledge shall I give to thee? Cause she, that's what he's asking. She asked for his signet, that's his ring, and his bracelet and his staff that's in his hand. So she made sure to have all the appropriate items so that he would know that I was the hoe that you slept with that night. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. She went back and she put on her original gear. And Judas sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. So he did try and attempt to pay the harlot. However, she wasn't there. Then he asked the men of that place saying, where is the harlot that was openly by the, the wayside? And they said, there was no harlot in this place. So, you know, he got to be tripping. He's like, where, the, where that woman at? Where the, where's the harlot? They're like, what harlot? And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot. So you see, it said there was no harlot in this place. Judah's bugging out, probably like, well, wait a minute. Where's this woman at? And Judah said, let her take it to her. Lest we be shamed, behold, I sent this kid, and thou shalt not found her. Because he knows that he has to keep his word. He made a word, he got to keep his word, because you can't swear on nothing, you can't make no pledges, you can't make promises. If you have a debt, you got to pay it. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt. So he thought she was out there hoeing. So he's like, she gotta die. And he wasn't playing. When she brought forth, when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man whose keys are, am I with child? And she said, discern i pray thee whose are these the signet and the and bracelets and staff so she had to show all her pieces this is your ring your bracelet your staff and judah acknowledged them and said she hath been more righteous than i because that i gave her not to sheila my son and he knew her again no more Judah acknowledged that all those items belonged to him. And he even said that she had been more righteous than him because why? He gave her Shalah and he made sure not to have sex with her no more. And she had already been through the, the ringer, the sons, the father. Now we're going to talk about the terrible famine in Egypt. Jacob tells Judah and his brothers to go buy food and they encounter Joseph. I don't want you to forget they sold their brother into slavery. Fear use, fear use.
Una abajo a matar a Mr. Yamanaka. Mata din que ni manque le me Mr. Yamanaka. A que cae y con furca ni más siquen. Oye, ni me encanté. No tara. Aba foca e dina balma kedi. Ela dive te anyaka. Aba ka digne da ela oye. Como nga da oye ka kurta. Ah, o masaka de o koni. Na unya dara le kandro. Aka kuna tri bana. O e mufu na tri. Eh. Isso ficou com a Sri Ken? É para ficar muito forte. É, ao sair do sol, você está tocando não? E me falhe, aí o que? Ba, era minha bala, a tá era calma. E bala mam sudo. Ba, e para que o macho me fenie? Além de ir para um befra, o tema, e para o tua bola, a can casa foi. Mbal Machedo, I fell in fire. Are you okay? I am Mr. Jamanana. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. They had already encountered Joseph, and Joseph said he wanted to see Benjamin, his brother, that by Rachel. And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. Joseph at this particular time had been promoted all the way up to second in charge in Egypt. He rose all the way up to the second ranking position in Egypt, the second most powerful person. And so his brothers came before him to get right because there was a terrible famine in the land. Joseph requested Benjamin. He wanted Benjamin to stay with him. Unfortunately, the brothers weren't having it. Judah said unto Israel, his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go that we may live and not die. Joseph was adamant when he told the 12 tribes of Israel, bring me back Benjamin. Because of what happened to Joseph, Israel was very hesitant about sending Benjamin and the very thought of leaving him he couldn't deal with that. Joseph reunites with his brothers with much travail. The book of Genesis chapter 44 verse 14, and Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. Do you guys remember the dream that Joseph had? Joseph said that his brothers were going to what? Reverence him. And they were angry about that. Like, what this nigga mean we gonna bow down? Well, Right here, folks, you are bowing down to Joseph. It's not Joseph, it was the Lord. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O oh my Lord, let thy servants, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear, and let not thine anger burn against thy servants, for thou art even as Pharaoh. Joseph sent the 12 tribes of Israel back to their father with sacks full of corn and the money that they brought to buy the corn. However, Joseph, being cunning, took one of his royal cups and had it placed in Benjamin's sack. He did that on purpose. So when they took off, the Pharaoh's men went after the 12 tribes of Israel, caught up to them, stomped them, searched their bags and found that Benjamin had the cup. Oh my God, they were angry about that one. 
This was a ploy so that Joseph would reunite with Benjamin. He would reveal himself as his brother. And then there was the big reveal that he was the brother that they, the 12 tribes of Israel, sold into slavery. The Israelites go to Egypt to live. Joseph tells the Israelites to say that they are sheep herders so the Egyptians would allow them to live in the land. Look at Genesis chapter 46, verse 12. And the sons of Judah, Ur, and Onan, and Shelah, and Pharaoh and Zerah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Pharaoh were Hezron and Hamul. And the sons of Judah, Ur and Onan, Shelah, these guys don't matter. But Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. You notice where it says, and the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul, because the line went through Perez. All the other sons that Judah had means nothing. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. So in this account right here, Joseph and Judah and all the 12 tribes of Israel set off to go see who? Their father. And this would be the first meeting of Joseph and Jacob, the long awaited meeting of the father and son. The book of Genesis chapter 46, verse 29. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father to Goshen and presented himself unto him and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while and Israel said unto Joseph now let me die since I have seen thy face because thou art yet alive Jacob gathers his sons to tell them what's going to happen in the last days fair use fair use Look at Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. But Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So once again, we heard this before. It said, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall pray. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Who are thou enemy? All of the 17 nations that have afflicted us. And the Lord says that our hands are going to be around their neck. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. All of you are going to bow down before the real Jews, the tribe of Judah, the top tribe. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him? So the Lord is saying that we are the lion's whelp. We, the tribe of Judah, we used to be on top, is what this is saying. It says he stooped down. We're brought to a low position. However, now that we're right here where it says, and as an old lion, because everybody's waiting for Judah to set it off, folks. Everybody's waiting for us. But the Lord is calling us an old lion. Why? Because they give us marijuana, strip club. We not roused up. We got cable. We got video game. Who's roused up? Almost every black man has a goddamn video game. You ain't roused up when you got Call of Duty. Right now, you are playing Call of Duty right now. It's the Sabbath. You're playing Call of Duty. That You ain't roused up playing that. You're not, you don't feel afflicted. when you. The Lord says, who shall rouse him up? What's it going to take? Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So it says the scepter, that's the rulership, the kingship. So for all you other tribes who keep saying, I'm going to be a king, I'm a king, I'm a... Hey, calm down. It says the scepter shall not depart. Let me give you an example. Ishakar is a strong ass. However, the scepter 
shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. So we're the lawgiver. We enforce the laws of the Most High God. Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamasha, Yahweh. It says, until Shiloh comes. That's Yahweh. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The children of Israel are identified. The Israelites multiplied. A new king rules over Egypt that did not know Joseph, and they began to afflict the Israelites, made them slaves, beginning 400 years of slavery. Fair use, fair use. <laughs> The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and, and Benjamin, Dan, and Nathali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died. And all his brethren, and all that generation, the children of Israel, were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. For the time that the Israelites were in Egypt, they multiplied. And that's what we did. Everywhere we go, we multiply. We don't die, we multiply. And if you notice here, Joseph died. And that began the problem for the Israelites. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure city Pitum and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So understand this thing the children of israel displeased the lord because as long as we were in the land we did take up after their custom we did not please the lord so the lord began this 400 years of affliction and when joseph dies up arose a new pharaoh that did not know joseph all of the egyptians appreciated joseph because it was through joseph's wisdom all praises to the most high God that saved them through the great famine. If it wasn't for Joseph, Egypt would have fell. However, Egypt didn't fail. They waxed rich. They became powerful and influential. And that was because of the most high God through Joseph. But this new Pharaoh, he didn't know nothing about Joseph. So he didn't, he didn't owe Joseph nothing. All he saw was these Israelites that weren't Egyptians that were waxing mightier than them. And that scared them. You know, just like today, how basically every nation is afraid of black people. So they look to do what? Destroy it. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bond in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the the Hebrew midwife, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman, and see them upon the stool, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared Yahweh, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, 
but save the men children alive. So isn't this what's going on today with abortion? You literally have our own sisters who openly tell you that if they find out, which I don't know how you would find out it's a boy if it's not even gestated to the point of being able to tell what the sex of the child. However, the Pharaoh here said that if it's a male child, kill him. If it is a female, save them. The Lord made these nasty Egyptians put us into the brickwork. And we were the ones responsible for building those nasty idols in Egypt, those pyramids and sphinx and all those horrific abominations. But notice where it said that the midwife feared Yahweh. They feared him. That's the proper way to, to treat our God. You fear him. So instead of doing that, save the men children. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midnights come in unto them. Therefore Yahweh dwelt dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty and it came to pass because the midwives feared Yahweh that he made them house and Pharaoh charged all his people saying every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive and understand this right here this act that the Pharaoh did was the precept to the coming of Moses the man appointed to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt and B, establishing the Most High God's law, statutes, and commandments, the Torah that we follow today. So today, we just learned about the life of Judah. Judah was the fourth born child of Jacob and Leah. The scepter shall not leave Judah. Yahweh came from Judah, however, Judah went off when he went and had sex with that evil, nasty Canaanite woman and made those little bastards. The Lord had to get rid of two of them. He slept with his daughter-in-law who he thought was a prostitute, thus creating Perez. The line went all the way down. We got King David, King Solomon, and we got Yahweh Bahashem Hamashach Yahweh. Judah also, along with his brothers, sold Joseph into slavery. However, they repented for this action, made up with their brother, had peace. Joseph died in peace under love of his father and his brother. If you are a descendant of the transatlantic and sub-Saharan slave trade, you were scattered on all four corners of the earth. You, no matter where you live at, are afflicted beyond belief. You are from the tribe of Judah. You are a real Jew because we did not hearken upon the voice of the Lord to keep his commandments. So remember this, repent, keep the Lord's laws, statutes, and commandments. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by way of Yahweh Bahashem Hamashach Yahweh. And with that, Shalom. Shalom. Hello. Judah. Judah and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you all descendants of slaves from the west coast of Africa that are scattered all over the world are the children of Israel American blacks negroes are from the tribe of Judah you must obey God's laws. Yeah.